everyone, it's Lydia here at Lydia's Leisurely Stitching. Welcome to my 37th floss tube video. Today is Thursday, April 11th, 2024. So my last video was about a month ago, and since then we had Easter, and I went to an adult egg hunt, which was really fun. Um, we worked in groups of two. One person was blindfolded, and had to get the eggs and the other person had to use only their voice to lead them to get to the eggs um, and so that was pretty fun and I spent Easter Sunday with my parents having lunch with them and then last weekend I went to the Steel City Stitchers retreat in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania and that was a lot of fun I sat with Corinne and Colleen from Grace Notes Fabrics and Hannah from Hannah Dowling, and I got to see my friend Carla from Craft Addict K, and so it was great to spend the weekend with all of them and get a lot of stitching done. So since my last video, I've worked on five of my six projects, and so I figured I would show them to you in the order of least progress to most progress that I've gotten in the past three or four weeks. So first up is Celebrate Summer by Madame Chantilly, and this is what it'll look like when it's finished. And this is stitched on 28 count Rainy Day by Atomic Ranch Fabrics. And since the last time I showed you, I've worked on it for three days. And this is what it looked like last time I showed it to you. And I think I did probably about 900 stitches in those three days. So here it is, and since the last time I showed it, I worked on finishing up the coffee mug that the flowers are in, and I started the lighthouse. This one is just so cute, and it's so fun to work on. The stitches are so big because it's um, 2 over 2 on 28 counts, so that's the size of 14 count stitches, and I'm not used to doing that. Um, my preferred fabric is probably 32 count, but I figured since it was hand dyed, it probably shrunk some, and so the 28 count would probably be closer to 32, I thought. Um, but yeah, I use a bigger needle, and um, yeah, it's coming out a lot larger than I, I thought it would be. So that's Celebrate Summer. And then the next one is Ornament Log Cabin Home, and this is what it'll look like when it's finished. This is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and it's artwork by Dominic Davison. And this is what it'll look like. No, I already showed you what it'll look like when it's finished. This is what it looked like last time I showed it to you. And this is stitched on 25 count easy count fabric, and I'm stitching it one over one. And I'm stitching this, I started it for my birthday, I think two years ago, and um, we're using hashtag B. Davison Sal. So if you're working on a Dominic Davison piece, we'd love to see your progress there too. And here it is. So since the last time I showed this to you, I worked on it for two days, and I did 1,861 stitches. So I worked on filling in the sky and bringing down this um, tree. And I've started trying something different. Usually to start and end my threads, I run them under the previous stitches. Um, but this is very tight. Um, the stitches are tight. It's hard to get my needle underneath them. Um, so. I started using, um, leaving these little strands, waist, waist strands, I don't remember what they're called, just pulling them out and leaving them down so that I'll stitch over them and then clip them off. And then I've been doing the single strand loop start to, stop, to start. And I really like the single strand loop start. Um, I'm not really sure I like leaving the strands like this because it's kind of messy. 
and um, yeah, but it is nice because I can carry further. So you can see that there are some stitches down here, whereas usually I probably wouldn't stitch that far. And I'm leaving the bird, so the mountain starts over here, and some of the colors in the bird are in the mountain, so I figured I would stitch them at the same time. This one's really neat. You can see the chimney with chimney smoke coming out. And I'm leaving the cabin for later, so I'm kind of just stitching the outline of the cabin and working on the confetti stitches in the trees instead. And I put up a poll on my Instagram asking what should be my new focus piece. Either this ornament log cabin home or a Victorian Christmas Eve. And uh, it was picked ornament log cabin home. So <laughs> even though I've only worked on it for two days, it's supposed to be my focus here in March. No, we're not in March anymore. April. It's supposed to be my focus here in April. And, um, yeah, so I only worked on it for two days, and that's why I was at the retreat. So I did get a lot of stitches in on those days. And today, the Whip Warriors focus event starts. And so I'm going to be using this as my focus piece for the weekend. And then I'll probably switch back to a place of her own. But that's getting into plans. We can talk about plans later. Okay. And then next is Victorian Christmas Eve. This is what it'll look like when it's finished. This is a chart by the Cross Stitch Arts, which is Sandy Littlejohn and Deborah Lester. Um, I don't know where you can find the pattern anymore. I bought this many years ago um, from their Facebook group. And the Facebook group is no longer active, and the website on the bottom is no longer active. I do know that it was in a magazine at one point, but I'm not sure what magazine it was or which editions it was in. And so this is what it looked like last time I showed it to you. This is stitched on 32 count pearl gray Lugana 2 over 2. And I've worked on it for 8 days since the last time I showed it to you and done 2,337 stitches. So here it is. So since the last time I showed it to you, I finished this lady's dress and I did this shop window, the gray stonework underneath the window, stitched this entire little boy, and it's hard to see, but I did some white blue stitching the color of the Lugana. Um, around the window and the boy. And I'm very pleased. I'm now at 26.79%. So I passed the quarter way mark in my last stitching. That was actually yesterday that I passed the 25% mark. And today I went over 26%. I can't believe that I'm already a quarter way done with this piece. I feel like there's so much to go. There are six children and I've done three so I guess that's a third <laughs> but I just feel like there's so much I haven't stitched yet but I'm really loving the way this is coming out um, it is funny to me the color variation that they use for like the highlights and the lowlights like in the skirt of that red dress it's very pink and I wouldn't have picked those pinks um, and you can see there's like a lot of shadow in the boys jacket um, but it works I'm I'm happy with it yep. so that's that one so I've been working that one the past few days and it's gonna go away now and then the next one is Idrisil and this is what it'll look like when it's finished this is by 2x2 two two stitch art on Etsy and I'm stitching this on 32 count olive green Lugana, one over one, with DMC 3862. And this is what it looked like last time I showed it to you. And I was looking at the pictures of last time I showed it to you, and I've gotten a lot done. So since the last time I showed this to you, I worked on it for six days. 
This is the piece that I worked on in the airport while I was flying to and from the retreat in Pennsylvania. And I've done 2,708 stitches. And here it is! So the last time I showed it to you, I wasn't even halfway. Um, and I finished the halfway mark, and then I started on the second half. And so there was an error in the first half. So I decided just to do the first half and then kind of start completely over on the second half so the error wouldn't carry over. And when I look at this, I can see where the error is. But I'm just hoping that no one else will be able to see it. <laughs> and I've actually already made an error in the second half. Um, there's an error up here in this. So I've kind of just been working everything else besides that so that I can get everything else right and then just fudge the connection with this piece. So I was less than halfway through last time I showed this to you. And now I would say maybe I'm at 60, 65% because the bottom half of the tree isn't very much. It's mostly the top half and I've done a good portion of the top half. And I should note that um, there are borders in the original piece. I've just decided to do it as a circular piece and just focus on the tree in the middle. So I'm really happy with the progress I got on that one. And then last, but certainly not least, is a place of her own. This is what it will look like when it's finished. This is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and the artwork is by James Christensen. And this is what it looked like the last time I showed it to you. I'm just going to show you the corner I've been working in because it's a big piece and it's hard to get it to all fit into the frame of the camera. Um, and this is what it'll look like. This is what it looked like last time I showed it to you. And since then, I worked on it for eight days, and I did 4,017 stitches. And all of those days were in March, because, like I said, I'm trying to focus on other things for April. And this is now at 94.46% complete. So we're almost done. Let's see if I can get this situated. So there you go. So... My goal was to finish this page here um, in March, and I ended up finishing that page and the two pages below it. So I put in the rest of that uh, grayish blue book, and I worked on moving the rug over and filling in around that area. So I'm very pleased with this. I have four full pages and two partial pages left to go. Less than 17,000 stitches now. So I knew that I could start slowing down on this piece because I'm planning on finishing it in October at the Stitch New England Retreat. So if you want to see it finished, come to the Stitch New England Retreat and I'll have a very exciting bell ring. Um, yeah, but I am, I am missing it. I'm getting good progress on my other projects this month. And this will probably come out. I think I would like to do 2,000 stitches in it this month. But there's no telling if I'll be able to stop after 2,000 stitches. So we shall see. So that's that. And so like I was mentioning earlier, um, for plans going forward for this weekend, so... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so five days. I'm definitely going to be working on Ornament Log Cabin Home and focusing on that piece, trying to get some good progress on that. I am in the very confetti heavy tree. So, you know, even if I just do 200 stitches a day, that's a thousand stitches of confetti done. And I might work in confetti and then go work in some of the sky and try and break it up that way. And then also I would like to get some progress on Bookseller, my Mill Hill Christmas Village piece that I'm working on right now. 
because I've worked on all of my other projects in the past three or four weeks. I haven't worked on that one and I kind of like keeping them consistent. So at the beginning of April, I had four days on Idrisil. I had four days on Celebrate Summer and four days on Millow for the year. And so I've, I've worked a couple of days on my other non-full coverage pieces. So it's time for Bookseller to get its turn. I, for some reason, I have a hard time pulling that whip out. I, I like working on it. When I'm actually working on it, I have fun. But I'm never like, oh, I really want to work on that. You know, so um, I don't know what's up with that. But I think I would like to finish it this year. And I might even like to finish another one this year. I'm kind of toying of the idea of finishing Bookseller before July and then spending all of July focused on another Mill Hill Christmas Village piece or maybe December on the Mill Hill Christmas Village piece. But I also have Victorian Christmas Eve, so I already have another Christmas project and I don't want the two of them, they'll kind of be fighting for time around Christmas in July and Christmas in December. So um, I have to figure out a plan about that. So that's all of my progress. I do have some haul that I want to share with you. So first I want to go through the swag bag we got from the Steel City Stitch Retreat. And like I said, I had a lot of fun at the retreat. It was different from other retreats that I had been to. Um, one thing I will say is that I didn't get a lot of communication about the retreat. Um, when I registered, I had to email them to ask them to send me the information, and then I didn't get any further communication from them for several months. So apparently there was a retreat piece that was sent out. I never got it. Um, and there was a retreat Facebook group, which I had been searching for Steel City Stitchers Retreat in Facebook because I figured there had to be a Facebook group. And I couldn't find it. Finally, the week before the retreat, I found it. It was, I couldn't find it because it was just called SCS Retreat. And I was looking for the full word Steel City Stitchers. So, um, it was kind of disappointing that there wasn't very much communication about how to find out information about the retreat. So, I mentioned that because... One of the things we got is this finishing pack, and at the retreat they had a table where they were teaching you how to make a flat fold using the retreat piece that you were supposed to stitch ahead of time. But I didn't get the pattern, so it came with this burlap, backing fabric, ribbon, um, cording to go around the side, pre-cut boards, um, a pen and a needle minder in there. So I was really impressed because my idea is to turn the Milho Christmas Village pieces into flat folds, but I've never made a flat fold myself. So I was really impressed seeing people making flat folds very quickly at the retreat. So that gave me confidence that I'll be able to do that when the time comes for that with that project. Then, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so we got this little pattern, and it says it comes with the pattern, the hoop, the Ada, and the floss. I don't want to turn it around because then you'll see the pattern, but it came with that little kit. And a coffee mug. And some flash drops. And then I will say, in other retreats that I've been to, they have done needle minder exchanges. Uh, no one came around passing out needle minders at this one. Um, usually there is a brag table where you can bring finished items to show off. There's no brag table. 
um, some retreats I've been to have a freebie table. And they had a freebie table with just their stuff on it. They said you can take, but you can't add anything. So if you had brought anything to give away, there wasn't really a way to do that. Um, but somebody did um, drop this off at the table. And we don't know what it is. <laughs> Nobody knows what it is. I've been wondering if maybe, like, um, maybe this is an inch long. And maybe it's, like, way to count the stitches to see what size fabric you have. I'm not sure. So if you know what this is, let me know in the comments. Okay, and so that's everything we got from the retreat. And then I placed a small one, two, three stitch order. So first of all, I got this pattern. This is, what's it called? Beachy Moon by the Cross-Eyed Cricket. And funny story about this, I had really wanted this chart for a long time. And when I went to Stitch New England last year, I looked for this chart in the store. And I didn't see it. And then I got to the actual retreat. And it was in one of the baskets they were doing for the raffle. Um, to raise money for charity. That's another thing. There was no raffle. Well, there was a raffle. Never mind. There was a raffle at the Steel City Stitchers retreat. And one of the raffle prizes was a Lowry. Which I just put in a few tickets for that. Because I was like, well, if it's free, I'll take a Lowry, you know. I'm not going to buy one. But... There was a lot of Lowry talk going on at my table, so they're definitely popular. So I put in for the raffle at Stitch New England for this pattern, and I won it. And it came with fabric, all the flosses, the buttons. These like sand dollars and starfish are buttons. So it came with the buttons, the fabric, all of the floss, and the pattern, of course. Um, and I've moved since I got home from the retreat, and so I couldn't find the pattern, and I thought, well, I really want that, and I saw it was on sale on 123 Stitch, and it's possible that it got lost in the move, so I just went ahead and bought another copy. And guess what I found, like, a week later, I found my original copy. So, I have two copies, and I want to say a big thank you to everyone. I should have said this at the beginning of the video. My last video got 4,000 views, and usually my videos get 200 views. So, I was actually so surprised, like jaw-dropping surprised. I couldn't believe it. And I had had 600 subscribers, and I got over 400 new subscribers. So, thank you all. If you are a new subscriber, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy seeing my progress. And, you know, it's, it's really great to get the feedback that people are enjoying my videos. So, thank you. And thank you for everyone for watching. And because of that huge new bump in subscribers, I passed a thousand, which is just amazing, mind-boggling. So I would like for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway to give away the extra copy I have of the Speechy Mood from the Cricut Collection. So if you want to enter the giveaway, use the word beach in your comment, and I'll pull a random comment for the next video. Please don't say giveaway or win or freebie because we don't want non-stitchers to find the video and take this away from the stitchers. And I would appreciate it if you were a subscriber and you need to be 18 so that you can give me your address so I can ship this to you. And I will ship it anywhere in the world so everyone feel free to enter. So that's the first thing I got from 123stitch. And then... Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. I got some Krynik. So this is 011HL. This is, I think they called it 
dark gunmetal. And then this is 0002. I think it's just like the generic gold. And I got these to go on Portrait of Veronica from Mirabilia. So I'm planning on starting this one in October once I finish a place of her own. If anyone would like to start her with me or start another Mirabilia with me for my birthday, let me know in the comments. I would love to have a little stitch along with you. And I got a little piece of fabric. So this is Star Sapphire Joplin. This is 28 count. Now the called for fabric is 32 count Star Sapphire Linen. I don't stitch on linen. I like to stitch on Lugana because I like it to be perfectly even. I don't want to deal with slubs. I don't want to deal with thin threads and thick threads. I just want it to be perfect and even, just like how my stitches are perfect and even. Or I'd like to think my stitches are perfect and even. So it calls for 32 count, and they don't make this in 32 count Lugana. They have 28 count Joblin, and they have 16 count um, Ada. So I wanted to get this so I could see what color it is, because I'm trying to find a color that does come in 32 count even weave. So if you have any suggestions on what fabric I could use, let me know, because I'm really kind of stumped about what to do. So that is all of my haul and all of my projects. So thank you again for everyone for watching and commenting and liking and subscribing because all of it really, it makes my day. Every time I get a comment, it brings a smile to my face and I just love hearing from you all because I don't have any stitchy friends in real life um, where I live. You know, um, it can be hard because it's kind of a lonely hobby. So I've been really making an effort to, when I watch Floss 2 videos, to comment just so that people know hey, I was here and I appreciate the work you put into making these videos. So when I get a comment from one of you, it really just makes my day, brightens up everything, and makes me so happy. So thank you again for watching, and I hope you all all have a good rest of your day, afternoon, evening. And I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.